In this video, I'm going to break down the best active flexibility exercises for splits and jumps and leaps. Really a lot of hip active flexibility is what we're going to focus on because this is something a lot of people ask me about to try to help with more aesthetic based sport. Things like gymnastics, cheerleading, dance, someone who's just trying to do more active flexibility on their own for aesthetic based hobbies. All these things are kind of lumped into this category. So we're going to break down five of my absolute favorite ones. I'll walk you through exactly what to do, how to do them and how many sets and reps and the common errors to look out for in advance. Okay, first, before we dive into the video, we have to announce the giveaway winner from our last month, Allison Balzar, you are the winner of this last kind of section of giveaway. So congratulations to you. Uh, you have won three days of shift symposium tickets, and you have also won one free month to the hero lab, which is our online educational uh, webinar section where we have kind of 50 plus videos with all sorts of things that you'll learn. So if you email us at support at shiftmovementscience.com, you will get to claim your winnings. Congratulations. And of course, you know, we got to do one last one here, bigger and better than the last one. So leading up to the symposium in June, we've been trying to do epic giveaways. So the last one, we're going to do here is the same thing. So drop in the comment section, put in hashtag 24 shift in the first 24 hours of this video and future videos coming out, and you'll be automatically entered to win a chance, right? So every new video you comment on is a random entry into that drawing. And this one is going to be the best one yet. So this person is going to win symposium tickets, but there'll be another big bonus on top of it. It'll be about $700 in value. So definitely make sure you follow the videos, which means you want to jump down. Also like, and subscribe and put the notification bell on because you don't want to miss that opportunity to enter one of these giveaways. So I hope you all have been enjoying the videos. Thanks for being here and let's dive right in. All right, so first what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just talk about some of the basics that I really, really like. So the first one I love here is going to be a curled up hip lift. And the reason I like this one so much is because people often have times with the back leg when they're doing jumps or splits or leaps and they feel really frustrated they can't get that back leg up. So this position when you're curled up in a ball like this, what this is doing is it's making it so you can't really use your lower back and you have to use your glute, your glute max and your hamstring in particular to kind of do an active lift into that end range position. So we're trying to teach athletes or yourself um, to use your muscles to lift up into that end range position. So in gymnastics or dance or cheerleading, sometimes the back leg of a leap or the uh, back leg of a jump is really the issue here and they can't quite get that angle they wanna do. So this is really good to kind of work on that active control of that motion, but also it really helps train and get stronger in your glute max. You can add some bands to this, you can add some progressions to this, um, but what's really important to teach how to specifically fire the muscles of your glutes and of your hamstrings and not let your back archer do all the work or just swing your legs up as far as you can. There's another version of this, which is really good, which is just a straddle one too as well. So essentially the same position, but now we're kind of working in the side and Taylor's really fighting hard to keep her belly button pointed down towards the ground and down towards her knee. It's easier said than done, of course, but essentially this now works the kind of glute into the side muscles, right? So the abductors, the external rotators as well, but these are really, really good, simple ways to work on these active flexibility drills. Literally all you need is a block, right? You need something to kneel on and that's really easy to find most gyms uh, or most training facilities. So these are two that I really like and the errors we're going to look out here for are going to be just wanting to make sure the head's not poking out, right? Keep that head down, keep that chest round and keep that self tucked up in the ball, right? And also making sure that inside with that, there's no arched back, right? If someone is not sitting fully on their thigh and they're a little higher, they're arching their back probably and they're swinging their leg up. They're not actually using muscular stuff, okay? The second thing we wanna make sure we're not looking at for is for the foot being too close, right? If someone's bending their knee, it's close to their body. That's an advantage you can do if someone wants to start off with an easier progression, but I don't wanna see her foot curled up at all. I wanna see a nice locked leg. I wanna see a nice pointed toe. I wanna see that body really extended all the way through, okay? So make sure that we're doing these two. I like eight to seven. Uh, 10 reps on each one, about three sets, one to two uh, sets per week. It's probably pretty good. And you can just add these into a warm up. You can add them into a complex and you do it at the end of the session. But these are super, super easy and super, super effective to try to make sure we're getting just that muscle working that we like. Okay, the next one that I like here is going to be a reptile slide. So this one is actually more for less of the up uh, kind of front and back splits and more of a straddle split. So in this exercise, we're going to have someone lay on their stomach and we're going to have them put their hands under their forehead. They're going to hollow in and tuck their core under and essentially try to lift their knee up off the ground and bring their knee up to touch their elbow, right? It's very hard to actually get your elbow just because of like, you know, torso dimensions, but that's the, that's the cue you want to use. Like try to get your knee to touch your elbow, right? And the key here is that when we kind of do this, we don't want to see somebody's rolling their sides. We don't want to see someone arching their back. And we also don't want to see someone who's side bending, right? I don't want to see someone, I don't want to see somebody get their knee to their elbow by dropping their elbow down to their knee. I want them to keep their hands under their head. That's why we use that cue and bring their knee up towards their elbow. So I love this pretty simple two sets of 10, right? Nice and easy one to two seconds up and down. I love doing these again, two or three times per week. Very simple, right? You literally just have to lay on the ground and it's very, very good to do, right? If you want to make this a little easier for someone, you can put a slider underneath their knee in this position. So essentially have their knee on the ground with a slider underneath that or a towel on a hard surface. And it kind of allows some assistance to go up and down. Younger ones, this is pretty challenging. 
Um, but also if you wanna make it harder for older athletes, just straighten the leg out, right? You can make it very easy to go harder if you just lock that leg out straight. It makes the lever arm a lot longer. So I love these first two drills, right? Super simple, super basic. Don't need a lot of equipment. Don't need a lot of space. You literally just need a ground or a block. And I think that's a really good way to think about things is what can I do simply, easily, and practically that's gonna get the goal that I really, really want. Moving on to this one. This one obviously requires a little bit more intensive setup, but I really like it if you have the setup and the opportunity to do it. So these are pyramid lifts, right? So what we're doing here is using a beam or a wall or a ballet bar. We're going to slowly increase the height of the lift higher and higher and higher and really force someone to work on actively flexing their hip and actively using those muscles. Again, just like the first one with their glute, I want someone to really use their core and really use their hip flexor here. So Heather's kind of here. She starts at a low block, right? And then this low block is maybe uh, six to 12 inches higher. She shuffles her way down. This one is six to 12 inches higher as well, right? And again, the reason I like this is a couple. One, it really focuses on the active control at end range, which is crucial, right? But two is if you work with a group of athletes, right? This is very easy to get a lot of athletes to go through a drill progression very simply, right? Oftentimes with a large group, it's very hard to set up 14 stations and nine different TheraBands and this and that. So I like this one because although it does require a little bit of setup on the blocks, you can get 15 or 20 kids to move through this really, really easily or 15 to 20 people in a class that you're teaching, right? So you can have all sorts of different levels going up and down and you can just make it easier or harder based on someone's height or someone's ability level. So this is the same kind of thing, but with a straddle, right? So trying to make sure she's lifting up and back all the way down the block. Again, really uh, rotating the hip out and keeping the hips tucked under. So everything is happening from the actual leg you're lifting while keeping that base leg tight. And so uh, I like 10, uh, 10 reps, which is about one lap up the entire block, right? Two sets, obviously each leg. Um, and we're trying to do this twice a week. And I really think that the, the main errors are to looking out here is that one, make sure the height is appropriate, right? Heather is a little shorter. So this block's perfect for her, but if someone's really, really tall, it's not gonna make sense to go to a low block or if someone's a beginner, right? They just started out, they don't have that end range flexibility, maybe start them a little bit lower, but try to make sure someone's not swinging their leg, right? You don't want someone just like rocking their leg up and flying it up. We want a really slow control lift as Heather is showing here. And we also wanna make sure that the hips are square the entire time. So in this backwards one, hips are straight ahead, right? In the forward one up here, hips are straight ahead well towards the blocks, right? Think about 90 degree perpendicular lines. We don't want someone twisting their hips to kind of get up, but super Super uh, effective drill. I really like this one a lot, and I, I've been using it for a couple of years now, and it, it's just really, really helpful um, to get a lot of athletes through uh, active flexibility drills. All right, and then kind of a more classic one, but one I think has to be in everyone's staple, it's just a banded kick series, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a band, a loop on one side and a loop on the other, and this is going to be cut about the length of them in a split. So if someone does a split on the floor, if they can kick to a handstand into a split, you can measure that and you can cut the bands and then tie those off so it'll be slightly shorter than the actual length of their legs, and that obviously makes the band resistance pretty good. Um, now with this, it's, it's obviously tough in a large group setting to do all these, so my suggestion is to maybe go three sets of bands of smaller, medium, and larger and kind of work your way around what we want to do because we want to get it so that the end range of tension actually has some stuff going on. So here's the series that we like uh, kind of in this kneeling position, kind of kicking straight to your head, 10 on each side, and then she'll move over to her side and she'll, two, uh, she'll do 10 straddle kicks, uh, sorry, back kicks first. So first she does back kicks, trying to again transfer over the glute muscles working really, really hard. And then lastly, you'll see her be on her side doing some straddle kicks here, right? So I really like these because uh, one, it makes an added resistance, which is very, very helpful. Two, it's easily scalable to all the athletes, right? Different color bands, different length of bands, right? It's very, very good for a younger athlete and an older athlete. And three is it really works on that explosiveness, right? A lot of people are doing jumps and leaps because they want to transfer this to, like I said, gymnastics or cheerleading or dance or circus or something else with this kind of motion. They want it to have power and strength. That's kind of what the aesthetic form is for. So this kind of helps transfer that kind of quick twitch, really fast notion of it. And I think there's a couple things to look out for. One is just make sure the band's not too short because I've seen times when somebody kicks the band really short or it's way too hard and they literally can't lift their leg up at all. The goal is to get her full range of motion, right? Two is, of course, the knees need to be nice and locked and keep really, really straight. We don't want to be using a tucked position. We don't want the hip flexors to be doing all the work with a bent knee. We want the quad muscle working equally as hard as well when we do all these, uh, as well as the abductors as, as, as a piece of that. And then lastly, the core is not braced, right? You have to keep a stable core braced to make sure that you're keeping your core is kind of in one spot. Your legs are doing the work. We don't want that fish swing back and forth. Like I said, with the reptile side, we don't want that uh, the shoulders swinging back and forth as well. 
well. Try to make this a very specific exercise where the core is braced and the legs are doing the work, okay? So these are a staple in most places, but I really think it's worth mentioning. Two sets of 10 for all those kind of all the way through. It takes you about maybe five minutes to get through all those. All right, and then lastly, this is my absolute favorite. I think this one is still not being done enough. A band assisted lift, okay? So the one we just did was a band resisted lift. This is a band assisted lift, okay? So what you can see here, and I'll pause the video, is that the band is actually over the beam and coming down. So it's helping Taylor get into her end range of motion, okay? A lot of times people put the resistance on right away, and I think that has a time and a place, but a lot of athletes struggle to make their passive range meet their active range, okay? So along with that back leg not getting high enough, and that's a big problem. The second biggest complaint people tell me is like, yeah, but on the floor they have a split, but when they actually go into the air, they don't have enough to get there. That oftentimes is a lack of strength and end range uh, control to get all the way up there. So I like doing these band assisted versions because it helps the athlete get a little bit of assistance, but a full range of motion. And the way you make this harder over time is you actually make the band a little bit easier, right? So this silver band is pretty uh, pretty difficult. It's giving her a lot of assistance. In the same way, if someone was trying to get their pull up for the first time, you would make the band lighter and lighter and lighter. We do the same thing here until the point where Tay can do this with a very light yellow band or no band at all that's gonna transfer over really well and match the active flexibility that she needs for her skills. Okay, then this is a straddle version. Same thing, the band is kind of over the, the over the beam behind her back and it's assisting her right up into this kind of motion here as well. So a couple things to watch out for here. One is that we wanna make sure we get a nice hold at end range. I don't want just like fast up, fast down. I do wanna to try to encourage that end range hold, okay? Two is that someone is only going through a partial range of motion because the band is not appropriate enough, right? The band is not assisting them enough. They might need more help on the band to get started. And then three is the momentum is being used. They're trying to lean into the beam. They're trying to really lean and pull that leg up fast. But these are very, very easy to do um, with momentum. So we want to try to make sure someone's hips are square. They're either straight ahead in this position or in here. They're kind of perpendicular to the beam straight ahead this way as well. So it's just going to be the bottom leg hip. It's just going to be the top leg hip flexing as well. So yeah, these are super, super effective and I love these as well. If you're someone who really wants to learn everything about vault bars, beam, floor, dance, choreography, all the things, we have an absolutely epic lineup of gymnastics speakers that are going to be here for three days uh, in the June of 2023. So three days, day one is medical care. Day two is uh, eight lectures on women's gymnastics, eight lectures on men's gymnastics and all sorts of mental health, culture development, uh, beam complexes, beam choreography, vault bars, beam and floor on top of that. And then the third day is going to be all about gymnastic strength and conditioning. So how do you build a program, plyometric, strength and conditioning, shaping, all that stuff. We have an absolutely epic lineup of speakers and time is kind of running out to grab your tickets, but um, you want to make sure you jump into this. So if you do want to check it out, shiftmovementscience.com backslash 2023 symposium. And then also like we were just saying is make sure that you drop down into the comment section, you put in hashtag 24 shift, because if you get picked to win, you will win an automatic set of three day tickets. You'll win a full weekend pass for yourself. Um, and you'll also get a giant bonus on top of that. Uh, I'm not going to share too much more on it, but it might involve a course of your choice uh, valued at about $500 here from Shift. So we're very excited to give things away and try to help the community. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video, please do us a favor. Just drop down, like, and subscribe and hit that notification bell because the more things you enter with hashtag 24 shift, the more opportunities you have to win. So hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one.